Good morning, everybody. That is a hard act to follow, but I appreciate everybody not streaming towards the doors immediately as Kai Rizal gets off the stage. Uh, I'm so glad to be part of not only today's presentation, but really part of this community uh, and part of an organization like CFSI that is doing so much good. Uh, and so thank you for taking a few moments with me this morning. This, as uh, you won't be surprised to learn, is money. Uh, it is what we use to convey value. It is also what we use to convey our values. Every day, all of us make financial decisions. Where we shop, where we won't shop, where we choose to deposit our money, where and how we invest, to whom and what we give. And those judgments are inherently, unavoidably, moral judgments about what we stand for as individuals and what we won't stand for. Uh, every day, Americans spend $36 billion. And all of those individual spending decisions taken together are an enormous lever for change. We have seen this before in our history. Uh, we've seen American revolutionaries choose to boycott British tea. Uh, we've seen consumers in England switch from sugar made in the West Indies to sugar made in India to hasten the end of slavery in the British Empire. We have seen men and women in Montgomery choose to stop riding the bus and walk instead and start the process of tearing down the entire edifice of, of racial oppression in America. And of course, we've seen high school students in Florida uh, use social media in just a matter of days to organize millions to pressure sporting goods stores to stop carrying assault weapons. They understood what so many people understand today, that there is a strong link between our financial decisions and what happens in the world around us. And what we've seen and what all the studies have shown is that today so many Americans, and in fact people around the world, are making daily spending decisions based on the ethics of the businesses where they're shopping and of the products that they buy. That is true especially of younger people, but it is increasingly true of people of all ages, all walks of life, uh, all political persuasions. They're doing it to make a personal moral judgment, uh, but also because they understand that this is a way to make a difference. 25% uh, of younger Americans, 36% of Americans overall, think that they can make a significant impact with their daily spending decisions, and we've seen that it's true. And, and so we at Aspiration consider ourselves a financial firm with a conscience. Uh, and that comes into play in the kinds of products that we're building and, and the fairness with which we construct those features. It comes into play in our business model, uh, what we call uh, pay what is fair. We allow our customers to choose what they decide to pay us, even though it's zero, even if it's zero. Most people, uh, vast majority of people don't uh, choose to do that and, and pay us a fair amount. Uh, but we do that to build trust in an industry that, as we all know, faces a massive and uh, in many ways, well-earned amount of distrust. Uh, we do, it, we do uh, what we can around charitable giving, giving 10% of our earnings towards charities, and, and I believe Gina Harmon from Axion, who's uh, our primary charitable partner, is here with us today. But we also construct products that help our customers both make money and make a difference at the same time. Uh, as you heard before, do well and do good. Uh, first and foremost among those is AIM, the Aspiration Impact Measurement, which allows people to, for the first time ever really, see their own personal sustainability score on a daily basis, based on where they're shopping and where they're spending, right in their Aspiration app, uh, right on the spending coming off their Aspiration debit card. They can see their own score, and they can also see the people score and the planet score of the places where they're shopping. And most importantly, maybe, they can see the people score and planet score of other similar businesses. 
So if they're deciding between going to CVS or Walgreens or Rite Aid or Burger King or Taco Bell or McDonald's or Chipotle, they can make those decisions based on how those companies treat the environment when it comes to greenhouse gas emissions or renewable energy usage, how they treat their employees when it comes to pay and benefits and equality and diversity and, and so on. It means that people can make spending decisions based not just on the traditional metrics of cost and convenience and quality, but based on conscience as well. That is sailing into this spirit of the age in which we live. 50 years ago, uh, actually at this very moment, Bobby Kennedy was lying in state at St. Paul Cathedral in New York. And thousands of people had lined up to see him and to pay their final respects. Uh, and they did so to pay tribute to somebody who was a senator and presidential candidate. They did so to uh, honor a family that had lost so much. Uh, but they did so also because he spoke with a unique moral voice that perhaps we haven't heard in the, in the five decades since. Uh, about two months before he passed away and before he was murdered, he spoke at the uh, University of Kansas. Uh, and this is what he said. He said, our gross national product is over $800 billion a year. But that gross national product counts air pollution and cigarette advertising and ambulances to clear our highways of carnage. It counts special locks for our doors and the jails for the people who break them. It counts the destruction of the redwood and the loss of our natural wonder and chaotic sprawl. It counts armored cars for the police to fight the riots in our cities and the television programs which glorify violence in order to sell toys to our children. Yet the gross national product does not allow for the health of our children, the quality of their education, or the joy of their play. It does not include the beauty of our poetry or the strength of our marriages, the intelligence of our public debate, or the integrity of our public officials. It measures neither our wit nor our courage, neither our wisdom nor our learning, neither our compassion nor our devotion to our country. It measures everything in short, except that which makes life worthwhile. If that's true for a nation, it's true for us as individuals as well. Do something a little quieter. Uh, that dollar bill uh, in my pocket is silent. The dollars and digits uh, and dots in my banking app don't say anything about who I am. But the decisions we make with those dollars and those digits uh, and those dots say everything about who we are. And we, as an industry, have an enormous obligation, but also an enormous opportunity to help our customers say who they are, to turn those quiet dollar bills into a moral voice that can be heard, a chorus that comes from those different customers, uh, and allowing those voices to make a crescendo that can lead to very powerful and hopefully positive change. So I look forward to working with everybody in this community, in this industry, on what we can do together to make that happen. Thank you very much.